I want us to turn to the Bible in the book of Numbers, Numbers chapter 12, verses 1 to 15, Numbers chapter 12, verses 1 to 15, and I want you to be patient with me because I want to take you through this scripture, and uh, even though we're going to start off with the scripture, then we're going to talk about other things, and we're going to see how God is going to bring this all together. Numbers chapter 12, verses 1 to 15, Miriam and Aaron opposed Moses. And Miriam and Aaron began to talk against their brother Moses because of his Cushite wife, for he had married a Cushite. Has the Lord spoken only through Moses, they asked? Hasn't he only spoken through us? And the Lord heard this. Now Moses was a very humble man, more humble than anyone else on the face of the earth. At once the Lord said to Moses, Aaron, and his sister Miriam, Come out to the tent of meeting, all three of you. So the three of them came out. Then the Lord came down in a pillar of cloud, and he stood at the entrance of the tent and summoned Aaron and Miriam. And when both stepped forward, he said, Listen to my words, you two. When a prophet of the Lord is among you, I reveal myself to him in visions, and I speak to him in dreams. But this is not the case with my servant Moses, for he is faithful in all of my house. With him I speak face to face. Clearly and not in riddles. He sees the form of the Lord. Why then were you not afraid to speak against my servant Moses? The anger of the Lord burned against them and then he left them. And when the cloud lifted from above the tent, there stood Miriam, leprous like snow. Aaron turned toward her and saw that she had leprosy and he said to Moses, Please, my Lord, do not hold against us that we have sinned so foolishly. Do not let her be like a stillborn infant coming from its mother's womb with its flesh half eaten away. So Moses cried out to the Lord, Oh God, please heal her. And the Lord replied to Moses, If her father had spit on her face, would she not have been disgraced for seven days? Come find her outside the camp for seven days, and after that she can be brought back. So Miriam was confined outside the camp for seven days and the people did not move until she was brought back. Heavenly Father, I ask that you add blessing to this word, that you be your words and not my words, Lord, that you put your heart in the heart of your people and that they may be open to receive this word, Lord. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Amen. And amen. There's an epidemic out there that scientists are really trying to study. There's an epidemic out there that could be worse to you than smoking. It could be worse to you than high blood pressure. It could be worse to you than diabetes. And this is the epidemic of loneliness. It's interesting because from New York to London, Scientists are naming the loneliness, loneliness epidemic. It's so serious that even Britain in January of 2018, they appointed a minister of loneliness. It's so widespread that people are having health adverse effects from being alone. People are being affected with depression from being alone. People are feeling more suicidal for being alone. People feel like they're worthless from being alone. People start hurting themselves because they feel they are alone. People become more isolated. People become more withdrawn. And even at times, that loneliness can cause people to act very extreme in ways they would not normally act. But you say, how can people feel so alone? If you feel so alone, you can even talk to your own phone and the phone talks to you back. You have friends that you can go and visit. You can pick up the phone, you can text, you can be connected to people. The reality is, brothers and sisters, that is not the number of friends that determines whether you're lonely or not. What loneliness is, is the desire for greater social interaction. 
In other words, I desire to be closer to people. It's not that I'm not around people. It's not that I don't have a family. It's not that I don't have a brother or a sister. It's not that I don't come to church. It's not that I don't go to work. But I desire a greater connection with other folks. So, even though people may spend days alone, they don't feel lonely. But other folk who desire a greater connection, they feel all alone. The Bible tells us in John 14 verse 16, Jesus says, I will ask the Father and he will give you another helper who will stay with you forever. It's interesting because when God created the heavens and the earth, after every day, he said, and God saw that it was good. Did you know that loneliness is the only thing that God ever said that was not good? The Bible says in Genesis 2.18, The Lord God said, It is not good for man to be alone. I will make a helper suitable for him. God realized that through Eve, Adam was going to have greater social interaction. With Eve, he could build love and have love be returned to him. With Eve, he would share the wonders of creation and the responsibilities of looking after the garden. With the creation of Eve, Adam would have intimate relationship with her and it would increase his relationship with God. By God designs, we all have a desire to be loved. We all have a desire to be long. We all have a desire to be appreciated. Children look for affection. Children love to receive affection. And they love to know that they are accepted by their parents everywhere they go. And even in our own relationships. We have family. We have friends. We have co-workers and others. And we, even though we are all individuals, we like to feel that we have a connection with somebody else. We feel that we like to have a fight and to know that we have a place. And that... When that becomes unfulfilled, we become restless, we become unhappy, we become lonely. It was when Eve was away from Adam, when Eve was all alone, when temptation came looking for her. It is very important, brothers and sisters, that only not you feel that you're not alone socially, but spiritually, it's important that you come to the house of God. Amen. You cannot be left alone with what's happening in the world out there. All the news, everything that is happening, everything you, you and I go through in a week. It's not good for us to keep that all in throughout the whole week, a month, a year. Because when we keep that all in... We begin to wonder if God loves us. We begin to wonder if God has a purpose for us. And we start feeling more isolated. And that's when we fall into the danger of the devil and him tempting us with the spirit of rebellion, with the spirit of depression, with the spirit of loneliness, with the spirit of rejection. You can name all other spirits and they will come when you are isolated from God. As we read in the scripture, we read that Moses' brother and sister start to complain to God about him. Miriam was the older sister of the three. And her name means bitterness. And the Bible tells us that she is the full blood sister of Moses and Aaron. And if you remember the beginning of the story in Exodus... So you know that Miriam is the one whose mother is Moses told to stand guard by the baby basket that she placed in the Nile. And because she watched over her brother as he floated in the river Nile, she was able to see that the baby went into where the daughter of the Pharaoh had been bathing. And this young girl bravely spoke to the Pharaoh's daughter and said, if you want to keep the baby, I can find you a Hebrew woman 
that can look after the child. And it was Moses' own mother that was able to breastfeed her baby that she thought she was going to lose. But if it wasn't for Miriam's intervention and God's guidance, she was blessed to be able to have her baby and not only have her baby, but also for the baby to be grown in the palace of the Pharaoh. Miriam was that key person that saw that cradle floating and at the right moment and at the right time, she was able to say, that baby is of a greater purpose. And his name was Moses, for he had been drawn out of the water. He had been drawn for a greater hope. He had been drawn for a greater purpose. He had been drawn to lead his people out of slavery. But she had not seen her brother for 80 years. The last time she heard of Moses, he had killed an Egyptian and he had run away. And now Moses returns, old, gray, with a staff in his hands. But Moses is not the same Moses no more. Because Moses is no longer single. Moses is married. And the woman that he married, the older sister doesn't quite approve of her. The Bible says she was a Cushite woman. Land of Cush, Africa. Dark skinned. She didn't look like her. She didn't dress like her. Her hair was not like her. Her manners was look, were not like her. And she, when she was brought to the dinner table, everybody was quiet. Because Zipporah did not look like them. The interesting part is they saw her for her skin color. They saw her for her culture. But what they did not know is that Zipporah had fallen in love with a man who claimed to be something that he was not. He claimed to be a prince of Egypt, yet he was running from the place that he was supposed to rule. He was supposed to be the leader of his people, and yet he is a murderer on the run. He is supposed to be the one who's to be the voice of the reason, and yet he is the one tending the sheep for 40 years. He is supposed to be one called to be anointed by God, and yet he smells like the field. The man that Zipporah married was not the man that was standing now before the Pharaoh, because in 40 years, she had to learn how to love a man that wasn't what he claimed to be. It's not easy loving people who claim to be something that they're not. It's not easy loving somebody who claims to be clean and yet they still have slip ups. It's not easy to love someone who says they're going to be financially stable and yet they keep misspending their credit cards. It's not easy to love somebody that claims to love Jesus and yet they act like they're part of the world. It's not easy loving somebody that says they have dreams and they still wake up in the middle of the night with nightmares. It's not easy to love somebody who claims to be something that they're not. Prince of Egypt, but broke. Prince of Egypt, but no future. Prince of Egypt, but where is your God? Prince of Egypt, but you run away from your family. Prince of Egypt, and you're Hebrew, and you have no identity. And yet, this woman, this Cushite woman, this dark-skinned woman, does not see him for who he is. He, she does not see him as somebody different. She does not see him as someone who is less. But she loves him for who God wants him to be. It's hard to love somebody who doesn't know how to love themselves. 
It's hard to love somebody who doesn't know how to be patient. It's hard to love somebody who is stubborn all the time. It's hard to fall in love with somebody who is always negative. It's hard to fall in love with somebody that every time they want to do something, they only do it halfway and they never get it done. But Zipporah, she starts being patient with Moses. She starts to teach Moses. She's teaching with grace and understanding. But there are times where she also has to be stern with Moses. She has to set boundaries with Moses. And says, Moses, maybe that was allowed in Egypt. But in this place, we don't do things like that, Moses. We don't react like that, Moses. Things are just not given, handed over to us, Moses. We are people of the desert. We don't have a home. We travel from place to place and depend on the mercy of God to supply our needs. We don't expect the Nile to give us what we need, Moses. We don't expect the Pharaoh just to hand everything over in a silver spoon, Moses. We have to work for what we got to earn here, Moses. You got to earn your keep, Moses. You got to be a man here, Moses. You gotta work and protect your family here, Moses. Maybe you were taught a certain way, Moses, that if you threw a temper tantrum, mommy did things for you. Mommy, the daughter of the Pharaoh, provided everything that you wanted. She got you Xbox, she got you PlayStation, but baby, here you gotta work. You gotta work to pay for the cable. You gotta work to put gas in the car. Here you gotta do things differently. And I don't know about you, Moses, but I believe that God can make a man out of you. That God can pull a man out of that prince. That God can put a man out of that man that has no vision at this moment. She said, Moses, if you and I are going to get married, Moses, if you and I are going to have children, Moses, if you and I are going to worship God together, we got to do this together. You cannot be alone in what you're trying to do, Moses. It is not good for man to be alone. You've been doing this alone thing all these years. You've been doing this alone thing all this time in the Pharaoh's palace. You've been trying to save God's people all alone. You've been walking in the wilderness all alone. You lost your vision all alone. You lost your identity all alone. But even in the desert, God can pull an Eve for a man that needs of her. Even in the desert, God can pull somebody so that you're not alone. Even in the desert, God can provide so that you don't feel that you're all alone and don't have nobody to identify with. This woman loved her husband so much that even when God was going to kill Moses, she stood and defended him. There's a small part in the Bible that after God, Moses meets God in front of the burning bush, Moses goes back and tells his wife, I'm going back to deliver God's people. But as when he starts his journey, even before he gets to see the Pharaoh, God gets mad with Moses and God is willing to kill Moses at that moment the great exodus was going to end before it even started and Zipporah realizes something she realizes that their son is not circumcised and the Bible says that she took a knife circumcised the son and threw the flesh at the feet of Moses so that God would not kill Moses. Because God was willing to make a covenant with Moses. And yet even in his own house. Moses had not put things in order. It's interesting because. People judge us for from the outside. People judge us by the way we dress. By the way we speak. By what we have. How much we spend. But sometimes people don't realize that in relationship there are struggles that other people don't know about. In relationship there are moments where people were ready to divorce that other people don't know about. In relationship there are moments where you feel that everything would be better if everybody just split up and went their own ways. And yet Zipporah, a woman that 
did not know the same God of Moses the same way that he was taught. She knew that God was a serious God. She knew that God was a God of covenant. And if she did not intervene for her husband, God could end the mission that she, God was about to send him in. Zipporah called to be a wife. Zipporah to be a, called to be a mother. Zipporah called to be a leader. And Zipporah was called to be understanding of God's demand and the calling upon the life of of this man that she married that is now a prophet of God that is called to lead and serve the people of the Lord. The Bible says when a man and a woman will marry she, there will be flesh of the same flesh bone of my, mo my own bone and that's why Adam called her Eve. She may have looked different than Moses. She may have been brought up different household than Moses. But she was the same flesh of Moses. She was the same spirit that was upon Moses. Was also upon her. So when God heard. That Miriam was speaking against the wife of Moses was the same as her speaking against Moses himself. And God was not going to tolerate that the person that saved you from your loneliness, that the person that saved you from your own rejection, the person that God used to transform you to become the person that you are today, God was not going to allow. I don't care if it's your brother, your sister, or somebody else. Only because you love somebody, it does not give you the right to criticize of what they decide to do with their life. It is not your right for you to say, well, I wish you would have done better. I wish you would have married somebody with more money. It is none of your business. Because when God puts two together, he knows why he is doing it. He knows the purpose that he is doing it. And he did not ask your permission whether you agreed with him or not. And Moses is clueless to what they are saying. But the Bible clearly says that God heard what they were speaking. You got to watch out with what you express discontent over. You got to watch out what you say about other people. You got to watch out even when you say, oh, they're so dumb for spending the money their way. It's not your money. Nobody asked you for your approval. Last time I checked, they didn't ask for a bank withdrawal from you. Whatever they decide to do, it is their business. And God said to Aaron and Miriam, I need to talk to the three of you because what God gives, whether it's at your work, what God blesses you in your home, what God does in your faith, what God does with your children, what God does with whatever he promotes you in. When God bless you, no matter what somebody else says, they can't stop God from blessing you. They can't stop God's favor from being on you. Even your mama can't stop God from blessing you when you walk in the steps of the Lord. <sighs> they were unhappy with Moses. But I ask you, brothers and sisters, were they really unhappy with Moses? Or were they unhappy? Because that's the way they were brought up too. You see, Zipporah could not do anything to change anything about her skin color. But in the same way, 
the spirit of discontent had been on the lips of Miriam and Aaron for all of their lives. Look at what the Pharaoh is making us do. And look at what the slave masters are asking us to build. And look at the little food that we got. And look at this that we got to do. And look at so and so. And look at this and that. Brothers and sisters, you got to stop living in a world that you compare yourself to other people. You got to stop comparing yourself to other people. You're not a slave to compare yourself to others. You are a free child of God. Live in the complete freedom of Christ Jesus. Let God bless according to the way he's going to bless. And if he's blessing you, God bless you. God multiply and God's grace be upon you. But we got to stop this society of always saying, well, I don't look like him and I don't dress like her and I don't got what they got and I don't drive their car. This spirit of complaining and discontent can bring you down the day of tomorrow. You got to stop saying, I don't do what they do. Our church doesn't do that. Our church doesn't go out like that. Our church doesn't, ah, 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 ah. I don't care what other churches do, but in this place, God moves and God leads and God speaks and we will do what God says. They always complain against everybody. And God saw and heard what they were saying. Bible says in verse 3, Now Moses was a very humble man. More humble than anyone else on earth. I will tell you honestly, that the man that you see before you today, not only is it by the grace of God that through my mom, but also through my wife, is who you see today. When the Bible says that Moses was a very humble man, that was not the same Moses that escaped out of Egypt and showed up at the well when Zipporah and her sisters were trying to feed their animals. He was a stubborn man. He was a prideful man. He was an arrogant man. And yet God, 40 years later, he says, Moses is the most humble person I have ever seen. It's because his wife had been there with him. His wife had cared for him. His wife had watched over him. His other better half had made sure that Moses always prayed, that Moses always fasted, that Moses got his rest, that Moses got to speak with God when he said, baby, I got to go and free my people. She didn't stop him. When she said, baby, I got to go talk to God in the mountain. She said, hey, do you want an extra sandwich? When he said, baby, I got to go and bring the Ten Commandments. She's blessed the Lord for speaking to her husband. She was the one that was the other half of Moses. And if it wasn't for her, the Bible would not say that this man was humble. And then verse 4, At once the Lord said to Moses, Aaron, and Miriam, Come out to the tent of meeting, all three of you. And all three went out. And then the next verse says, Then the Lord came down. I praise God. That there's times where I've been called to the principal's office. There's been times where I have been on a moment that I thought that things were going to go bad. But because the Lord came down. Because the Lord left his throne and decided to walk with me just like he did with Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. The same God that descended from his throne and shut the mouth of the lions in the lion's den is the same God that has rescued both you and me. That has been there for our families because the Lord came down. Our God is not a God that watches with his arms crossed. Our God is not a God that watches to see if you make another mistake so he can laugh at you. But our God is a God that descends in the midst of his people. And when God descends, there is no devil, there is no sorcery, there is no curse. 
that can withstand the power of God. And he says something amazing. He says, when there is a prophet among you, I, the Lord, reveal myself to them in visions. And I speak to them in dreams. But he says, but your brother, the one you're gossiping about. The one you're murmuring. The one you're too busy about who he married and the color of the skin of their kids. He is faithful in all of my house. With him, I don't speak to him only in visions. With him, I don't speak to him only in dreams. But with him, he said to them, I speak face to face. I speak to him clearly. And not in riddles. I speak to him directly. And there is nothing that I will hide from him. And he sees the form of the Lord. And then the anger of the Lord burned against them. And he left them. I'm about to tell you something. If somebody's done you wrong. If you have information that can bring somebody else down, if you have an opportunity to take your revenge on somebody else, my advice to you is don't do it. God's justice is better than any revenge you could ever take. When you exist, Take out revenge on somebody. I don't care if they deserve it. I don't care if their name is written all over it. I'm here to tell you today that when you take out revenge, you take God out of the equation because he can no longer bring justice into something that you decided to take your own justice with. God's justice is greater than any revenge that you could ever bring on somebody else. The battle belongs to the Lord, the Bible says. And then God left. There is no worse thing that any believer could ever hear than to hear that God has left. God left them. The Bible says when the trump, final trumpet sounds and those in Christ Jesus are taken up in the rapture, people will look for him in the churches. People will look for him in places of worship and they will realize that God has left. And God left Miriam. God left Aaron, and when God departs, nothing good can ever happen. More than God bless me, more than praying God anoint me, you got to pray every day, God, don't leave me. Don't leave me, God. Even though I stumble, even though I still struggle, even though I backslide, even though I react ways I shouldn't react, God, please don't leave me. Don't leave me, Lord, because when I'm left by myself, I'm exposed. When I'm left by myself, I am naked to any attack. When I'm left by myself, any curse, words of curse or witchcraft and sorcery, I'm open target to receive the attacks of the enemy. God, please don't leave me alone. And the next thing that they see is that Miriam is now covered in leprosy. It's interesting because it's not in the initial stages of leprosy. The Bible says that her stage was so advanced that her skin had turned white as snow. There was no flowing of blood. There was no vessels. There was no life in her fingers. There was no life in her face. She was like a walking zombie. All life had departed from her. The Bible tells us that when somebody had become unclean with leprosy, they had to present themselves before the high priest. 
Aaron was the high priest. And when he looked over, he saw his own sister covered in leprosy. And that is the first case in the Bible that leprosy was ever used as a judgment over somebody else. And God was not only telling Miriam her punishment, but it was also letting Aaron know you was a high priest. You can see what I did to her. And if you don't change the way you talk, high priest man, you're next. Because you now know, you now can identify what leprosy is. Leprosy is what happens when you're in the disease of the nervous system. That when your nervous system begins to die, your hands become numb. Your feet, your extremities become numb. To the point that you now bump into things, now you cut yourself with things. And you become so clumsy that you don't realize that there's an infection. There's a cut. There's an open. There's a virus. And that's when the skin starts to fall apart. Leprosy is not a skin of the disease. A skin disease. Leprosy is a skin of the heart. Because when the heart can no longer feel any pain, everything else starts to fall apart. When God departs, and we're left to our own human heart. Our human heart is callous. Our human heart is so revengeful. Our human heart feels no pain for other people. Our human heart because all about me and I don't care about you. And it got to the point that what she had felt in her heart was now what was visible on her body. The Bible says that whatever you speak, the power of life and death lies in the mouth. And the woman that was talking about breaking up the marriage of Moses, the woman that had been condemning the wife of Moses, now her own life was falling apart. Her hands were breaking. Her toes were dissembling. Everything that she had cursed Moses with, God said, I will put it upon you and I will multiply the words that you said about him. And you thought that her problem was because she was dark skinned. Well, let me tell you, your disease is going to be whiter than snow. And it's going to be so bad that whatever you thought you could keep, whatever you thought you could retain for yourself, when God puts a curse upon you, everything starts to break. Everything starts to fall. Everything starts to lose shape. Chaos comes upon you. And in the same way that I can't stop God from blessing you, when God puts you on time out, there's no much of the pastor can pray over you. There's nothing that the church can do over you. When God says you're on time out, there is nothing I can do. Because when God purts his wrath upon somebody, there's nothing that that person can do to change God's mind. The same woman, the same woman who had been talking about Moses, God's justice does the exact same thing to her. And when the cloud lifted everything that she had, she started to lose. She started to lose her fingers. She started to lose her skin. She started to lose her face. She started to lose her appearance. It's interesting because when Jesus healed the blind man, he sped into the ground, put the mud and said, you are healed. When he held the paralytic, he said, my son, take out your mat and go. You are healed. But when he went and saw the lepers, he said to them, go and show yourselves to the high priest. 
to see if you have been cleansed. It wasn't a healing. He said, you need to show yourself to the high priest because you need to be cleansed. When there is leprosy in your heart, there is no amount of anointing that somebody can put with the oil. There is nothing that somebody can do to change what is happening in your life. You need to show yourself before the high priest Christ Jesus and say, Lord, cleanse me. It's not just a healing of a hand. Cleanse my heart. Cleanse my mind. Cleanse my mouth. Cleanse my spirit. Cleanse my soul. Cleanse this negativity. Cleanse the spirit of rejection. Cleanse the spirit of loneliness. Cleanse the spirit of rebellion. Cleanse from within me, God. It's not just a healing that somebody touches you. But it has to be from the inside out. And when Jesus said to the leper, Go show yourself to the high priest. Only one came back. And then, what she did with her mouth, God put in her life. And Moses saw what had happened to his sister. And Aaron said, Moses, ask the Lord to heal her. Ask of God to have mercy on her. And God said, I will cleanse her. I will heal her. But she needs to be out of the camp for seven days. The one that wanted to split up Moses' marriage is not the one split away from God's people. You got to be careful with what you complain about. Because what you complain about is going to boomerang right back to you. And you think it can never happen to you? You think that it can never affect you? You gotta watch out. Because you may have a spirit of leprosy inside of you. That whatever you say breaks apart. I'm gonna tell you something. The people that criticize you are the people that will never have more than you. The people that criticize you are people that have less than you. They may have more money, they may have more fame, but they don't have the Christ that you have. They don't have the faith that you have. They don't have the commitment that you have. So why do you allow those words to tear you down? Why do you allow those things to take you away from what God is trying to do? Why do you allow their leprosy to infect you? Why do you allow things that are breaking apart all around them affect what God is trying to bring together in your life? God is trying to bless you and you're trying to use what you're jealous of. And God says, don't be jealous because that is a curse. Don't be jealous because that is not from God. Don't be jealous because that is not from the heaven. What I will give you is more than gold and silver. Peter said, I don't have gold and I don't have silver. But what I do have, I give to you in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. I thank you, Lord. I thank you, Lord. Because you're more than gold. You're more than silver. You're more than a precious stone. You're more than anything I could ever buy in this world. She had to leave the people that she was called to guide. She became a curse instead of being a blessing. Earlier during the service, we took communion. And we read in Luke twenty two nineteen, 19, and he took the bread, gave thanks, and broke it. When Miriam was affected with leprosy, fingers began to break. Things began to fall. Because she had now become a curse. Luke 22. Jesus was telling his disciples, I am about to become a curse. 
I'm about to become sin. I'm about to become AIDS. I'm going to become cancer. I'm going to become diabetes. I'm going to become all the worst diseases that you could ever imagine. And my body is going to break. My body will fall apart. So he took the bread, gave thanks, and broke it. And he said, this part that I give to you, the world says it's a curse. But when you take it and eat it, it is now your cleansing redemption. Take my bread and eat. Because what you call cancer, God is about to cleanse you and give it to you as your healing. What the enemy tried to call a curse. And God the Father could turn away. And the whole heaven and earth turn dark. It's because Jesus became the curse for you and me. And in the same way that Miriam's fingers broke apart. And then her skin began to fall apart. Jesus said, when I become the curse, my body will break. My body will bleed. My body will be torn. But when you take off my bread, what was meant for me to be a curse, when you put it in your body, it is your redemption. When you put it upon your body, it is your cleansing. When you take it upon your body, it is your miracle. When you take it upon your body, it is your deliverance. When you take it upon your body, this is your blessing. And he said, I'm not going to be away for you for seven days like Miriam was taken out. But on the third day, the Bible says, uh, he rose from the dead because the one that became a curse, he became the high priest that could cleanse his people, that could redeem his people and call them his own. He said, do this in remembrance of me. So whenever you feel the enemy attack you, say, I have the part of Jesus in me. And I claim it in remembrance of the covenant with God. The no attack of the enemy. No lie of the enemy. No curse and no words to divide my family. Nothing negative against me. Because I remember who Christ Jesus is in my body. The one that became sin. He is the one that redeemed me. The one that became my curse. Is the one that has blessed me. The one that became the rejected of God. Is the one who is the lifter of my head. And whom shall I be afraid of? Whom shall I be afraid of? If God is with me. Who can be against? That's why the thief on the cross said to him, Jesus, remember me in paradise. The thief was not at the Lord's Supper. The thief did not receive the bread of God. But there on the cross, God said, I will give, take your curse. And he said to him, surely today you will be with me in paradise. When you do things in remembrance of God, you're calling God out and saying, God, I remember my covenant with you. God, I remember the words you spoke to me. And in faith during this attack, Lord, in faith during this storm, God, in faith during this therapy, God, in faith during this recession, God, in faith during this period of unemployment, God, in faith during this period I'm going through legal problems, God, in faith during this time that we don't even have enough food on our table, I remember you, Lord, just like the thief on the cross. Lord, remember me today in paradise. Remember me today in paradise. Because you took my curse and you gave me your cleansing. You took my curse and you gave me what I needed. You took my curse, you took my blame. You took all of my iniquity, you took all of my sin. 
and you gave me what I needed to receive. John 14, 26 says, But the Helper, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, he will teach you all things, and he will help you remember everything that I told you. God wants you to break away from the things that don't allow you to remember God. He wants you to break away from being torn down by the things that people say. God didn't you bring you out of loneliness. God didn't bring you out of that depression just to let negative words steal you away from what he's trying to do. God has not refined the man, the woman that he sees before him today just for allow any negativity on Facebook or social media to stop you from your faith. God didn't bring you up to this point just to let anything that you're jealous of take you away from what God is trying to do in your family. You need to break away from the spirit of complaining, the spirit of discontent, and say, Lord, whatever you do, I will enter your coach with praise. I will enter with thanksgiving in my heart. For I will say, this is the day that the Lord hath made. I will rejoice and be glad in it. I thank you, Lord, for what you're doing. I thank you for what you're working in my life. I thank you for the resources you're pulling right now in this moment. Lord, I thank you, I thank you, I thank you. Because the curse that you became was the redemption of me. The curse you became was the cleansing I needed. The curse you became was the entrance for me to come back and be part of the church. Church, be part of the body, be part of the bride, be part of Jesus Christ one day. The Lord is in this place and he is speaking to every one of us and he is saying, I'm trying to break you away from negative thinking, negative words. I don't care if it's coming from your father-in-law, mother-in-law, I don't care if God says, I am doing what I'm doing in your life. And I will bless it. But the warning is. If God curses. Only God can lift that curse. Only God can extend that forgiveness. If you stepped out of line with God. And you feel that things are starting to break apart in your life. Things are not making sense. Money is disappearing. Bills are not getting paid. You're missing shifts at work because you're always sick. You need to ask God for forgiveness. Say, Lord, maybe I said something against somebody else. Maybe I said, maybe they shouldn't have done this, shouldn't have done that. Lord, cleanse my lips from leprosy. Cleanse my heart. Do an inner healing. Take this heart of stone and give me one of flesh. Because this heart of stone does not feel anything. It does not feel pain. It does not feel love. It doesn't feel shame. It doesn't feel remorse. Lord, change it. Because I can't function like this anymore. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I want to say something to you. This Holy Spirit of God was saying to me. Y este día vamos a and today we're going to ask forgiveness if we're speaking incorrectly about somebody when you see that Miriam critique the poor because of her skin color God wounded her own skin si alguien Trae algo contra tus hijos. If somebody brings something against your children, Dios tenga misericordia de ellos porque Dios puede hacer que eso caiga sobre ellos. May God have mercy upon them because God can reciprocate that upon their children. Si alguien ataca tus finanzas por envidia, if somebody is attacking your finances because they're jealous, Dios va a atacar sus finanzas. Then God is also start breaking apart their finances. Si un brujo se atreve a enviarte una maldición, if a sorcerer dares to send a curse against you, esa maldición va a caer sobre ellos. That curse will fall back upon them. Lo que sale de nuestra boca, what comes out of our mouths, tiene poder de vida y poder de muerte. Has the power of life or death. Ahí estaba yo atrás buscando citas para ponerlas ahí. And there in the ahí. back, I was looking at Bible verses. 
Y ahí fue donde el Señor me dijo. And that's what God said to me. Como ella atacó a la esposa de Moisés por su piel. Because she attacked, because she was a Cushite woman of her skin color. Yo le hice ver que su piel estaba más podrida que la de ella. I made her realize that her skin was more rotten than any other skin. Hermano, nos vamos a poner de pie. Let us stand together right now. Y hay que pedirle perdón a Dios. And ask forgiveness of God. Yo voy a orar por perdón por usted, pero usted tiene que hacerlo por usted mismo. I'm going to pray for forgiveness, but you're going to ask for your own forgiveness as well. Si alguien ha hablado contra su llamado, if somebody's spoken against your calling, Dios va a hacer que fracase el llamado de ellos. God will make their calling fail. Yo no le quiero mencionar nombre porque no es correcto. I don't want to mention names because it's not the right place. Pero algunos que se levantaron contra mi llamado calling, ya no están en el llamado en esta ciudad. Porque Dios es celoso, hermano. Dios le ha llamado a usted con un propósito santo. ¿Quién soy yo para oponerme al llamado que Dios le ha hecho a usted? Yo no puedo venir contra el Espíritu Santo que mora en usted, hermano. Usted ha sido sellado también con sangre. Usted también es redimido con sangre. Su nombre también está escrito en el libro de la vida. ¿Quién soy yo para ponerme a los planes de Dios? Vamos a comenzar a orar, hermano. Y haga usted su oración. Recuerde esto. Miriam despreció a la esposa de Moisés por su piel. Y fue su piel la que fue herida. Si ella hubiera atacado a los hijos de Moisés y a los hijos de Miriam, a los hijos, a, a la de la esposa Zephora, If he should attack Zephora's children with Moses, yo les aseguro que Dios hubiera herido de muerte los hijos de Miriam. God would have wounded with death possibly the children of Miriam. Porque algo que Dios le dijo es esto. Because something that God said to them was this. Él es un profeta que yo he escogido. He is one that I have chosen. Y como se levantaron contra Moisés. And because they came against Moses. Dios le mostró se levantaron contra mí. God said, you now mess with me. El que se levante contra ti y tu familia. O contra mí y mi familia. Va a terminar peleando con Dios. Y la pelea con Dios la van a perder. Así que hay que pedir también misericordia. Para aquellos que se han levantado contra ti y contra mí. Para que Dios les abra el entendimiento. Y no caiga sobre, era, sobre ellos la ira de Dios. Padre, en el nombre de Jesús. Father, Jesus, perdónanos, Señor, por todo lo que es, hemos hablado en forma incorrecta. Señor, tú eres el que escoge a tu pueblo. Señor, tú eres el que bendice. Tú eres el que redime. Tú eres el que prepara a tu pueblo. Señor, qué tremenda esta lección. Miriam habló de desprecio y muerte sobre la, sobre la esposa de Moisés. La condenó por su piel. Y su piel fue cubierta de lepra. Señor, ten misericordia de nosotros. Para que hablemos lo correcto. Que no dejemos que el diablo nos mueva en celo o envidia contra nadie. Porque lo que hablemos contra otros puede caer sobre nosotros. Señor, ahora también te pedimos misericordia por aquellos que hablan falso testimonio porque lo que ellos hablen va a caer sobre ellos porque tú eres el que nos llamaste tú eres mi Jesús el que nos constantemente nos ministra y nos habla el que remueve las cargas y en esta hora Señor hablamos perdón para aquellos que se han declarado nuestros enemigos porque no queremos que terminen peleando contigo porque terrible cosa dice la Biblia es caer en manos de un Dios vivo Señor cortamos toda maldición que se haya hablado en este momento 
momento contra nosotros ya sea por el color de piel sea por la familia que tengamos sea por la unción que tú nos has dado Señor tomamos autoridad en el nombre de Jesús y le recordamos al diablo que el que nos ungió se llama Jesucristo y él le venció en la cruz del Calvario y él nos ha llamado a ser más que vencedores yo bendigo a cada hermano que está aquí bendigo sus hogares bendigo a sus hijos bendigo sus llamados Señor gracias porque tú en los aires